Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be working with an interesting infinite sum. We have 1 minus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 7 minus 1 over 10 plus 1 over 13, so on and so forth. And this goes on forever, where the denominators are going up by 3. So we have a one-ended denominator, and then a 4, and then a 7, and then a 10, kind of like arithmetic sequence, but in a reciprocal form. And then the signs alternate, plus, minus, plus, minus, so on and so forth. Okay? So we're going to be finding a numerical answer, but one of the most important questions, does this sum converge? And how can you explain that, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at the following expression. 1 over 1 plus x cubed. Now you might be questioning like, where does this come from, right? You'll see in a little bit. Now I want to do uh, partial fractions on this. In other words, I want to write it as the sum of two fractions whose denominators are factors of 1 plus x cubed. So what are the factors of 1 plus x cubed? One of them is 1 plus x from sum of two cubes. The other one is going to be 1 minus x plus x squared, right? If you factor it using sum of two cubes. Now, this calls for the following. We should be able to write this as a over 1 plus x. And the reason why we use an a is because the degree of the denominator is 1. It's linear, so the numerator must be 1 less, which is a constant. And for the denominator, we need to use something linear because the denominator is quadratic. And allow me to write it as x squared minus x plus 1. No big deal. It's the same thing, but let's write it in standard form. And then we'll make a common denominator and just set the numerators equal to each other. By comparing these two things, we're going to get the following. 1 equals, notice that I'm only looking at the numerators because the denominators are the same. We're going to get a times x squared minus x plus 1 after making a common denominator plus bx plus c multiplied by 1 plus x. Awesome. Now, there's a couple different ways to go about it. You can go ahead and replace x with certain values such as 0, 1, and negative 1. Anything is fine, but 0 and 1 definitely would be helpful. And even negative 1 because that's going to make this 0. And then, of course, you must replace x with those values on both sides. But on the left-hand side, we have a constant, which you don't have to worry about because the left-hand side is always going to be 1, which is what makes it nice. Okay? Or an alternative method would be distribute everything, get a polynomial, and then compare the two polynomials. The coefficient of x squared must be 0, the coefficient of x must be 0, and the constant term must be 1. Make sense? Uh, the first method is usually easier, but again, it depends on what you like. Anyways, to keep a long story short, after doing all that work, you should be ending up with something like this. A is going to be one-third, B is going to be negative one-third, and C is going to be two-thirds. So we've got three values, and they all have to have a, I mean, they seem to have a three at the bottom, which means I can kind of factor that out, okay? So here's what comes out of this. We have a one-third that is a common factor, sort of, and then the inside is going to be, because a is one-third, and I already take, I've taken care of the one-third, so I only have one here over one plus x, and here I get two minus x, or negative x plus two, divided by x squared minus x plus one. Now this is nice, because if you are going to integrate Wait a minute, did I say integrate? Never mind. <laughs> Here's the thing. Yes, we are going to integrate, okay? Let me reveal it. If you're going to integrate something like this, you know, a cubic term at the denominator, this is complicated. You want to split it up so you can get simpler, simpler denominators. Why? Because this is easy, easy to integrate, and this is kind of easy to integrate. The first one is fairly easy because that's a natural log, right? You know that, hopefully. What about the second one? Let me, without further ado, let's go ahead and do this. I want to go ahead and I think just move stuff uh, around a little bit. Let me go ahead and take this block. Ooh, ooh, I didn't want to take that thing there, but that's okay. I guess we could get rid of it real quick. And then I want to go ahead and 
use the integration here. So I'm going to integrate this with respect to x. And of course, that means I'm going to integrate this with respect to x. You see, when you split it up, it's a lot easier. And this one is ln natural log. And this one is, notice that the denominator is quadratic and the top is um, linear. There's a difference of one uh, degree. So this is probably going to be partially ln maybe, but it could also contain some type of uh, trigonometric or inverse trigonometric function. Let me explain what that means real quick. And I don't want just want to integrate like uh, without uh, limits. I want to use zero. To, I want to integrate from zero to one. Okay. And this gives us the following. Obviously, you can take the one third out and then split it up into two integrals. But let me tell you something. When you do that, you're going to get something like this, dx over 1 plus x, and then plus 1 third. Here, you're going to have something like this, negative x plus 2 divided by a quadratic. But that quadratic can be written as x minus 1 half squared plus 3 fourths. In other words, complete the square. And that's significant because we're going to go ahead and use substitution. So if you go ahead and, you know, set this equal to u, and then this will be like u squared plus a squared in the denominator, and that actually calls for arctangent, okay? So we're going to have an arctangent in our integral or integrand. And also notice that arctangent of 1 over root 3, which is going to come up as a result, is pi over 6. Under those conditions, tk lss, which stands for, to keep a long story short, we have the following. From 0 to 1, dx over 1 over x cubed is equal to 3 ln 2 plus pi root 3 divided by 9, which is very, very irrational, right? But don't worry. We're going to set this equal to something else. Now, again, the question comes up. What does this have to do with our series? You'll see in a little bit. Okay, here we go. Now, if you start with 1 over 1 plus x cubed, now we kind of separated into two fractions and integrated it, right? And then plugged it in. I've done all the work for you or someone else has done it for us. But we can also look at this problem a little differently using an infinite geometric series. And by the way, when you set your limits of integration from 0 to 1, you're basically assuming that the variable is going to stay between uh, those values, which means our infinite geometric series is going to converge for sure. But this is equal to 1 minus x cubed plus x to the 6 minus x to the 9th dot dot dot, so on and so forth. Now, how did I get that so quickly? If you think about 1 over 1 plus r, you're going to realize, hey, this is 1 minus r plus r squared minus r cubed plus r to the fourth and so on and so forth. Same idea except r is equal to x cubed. Make sense? Now, here is the most fun part starts. We're going to go ahead and integrate this expression and that means we're going to integrate that infinite sum. Right? This one. With respect to x of course. And when you integrate this, you're going to get x minus x to the fourth divided by four plus x to the seventh divided by seven. Remember the rule for powers, x to the 10th divided by 10 and so on and so forth. It goes on forever. And when you replace x with zero and one, the top and the bottoms, zero is not gonna make a difference, but one is gonna give you one minus one fourth plus one over seven minus one over 10 plus one over 13, so on and so forth. And ta-da, this is the expression I've been looking for and the integral is the following. So my sum is going to equal this. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.